Hey guys, welcome to the to Money Talks News, the podcast. This episode, we're talking about what everyone seems to be talking about these days, rapidly rising prices, otherwise known as inflation. The Federal Reserve Bank has a target for rising prices. They consider 2% a year to be the right amount. Uh-oh, the latest figure reflects an annual rate of more than 9%. That's the highest it's been in more than 40 years, and it's hurting people, especially those least able to afford it, the millions of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. So let's talk about inflation, how bad it's going to get, how long it's going to last, and most important, what we can do to fight back. I'm your host, Stacey Johnson. As usual, my co-host will be financial journalist Miranda Marquette. Hello, Miranda. Hey, Stacey. Listening in and sometimes contributing is our producer, Aaron Freeman. Hey, Aaron. Hello, everybody. And this week, guys, we have a very special guest. It is Barnoosh Tarabi, <laughs> editor-at-large for CNET Money and the host of the popular Mudcat. <laughs> what is wrong with me? And host of the popular <laughs> podcast, So Money. For the uninitiated, Barnoosh is the Beyonce of personal finance podcasting. And I know this. Because I'm the Jay-Z of personal finance podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Farnoosh, we are so honored to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you so much. I have to say that is the coolest introduction, the biggest flattery. Uh, I, 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 It's a lie also, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, it's, we're, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started, Farnoosh. I have a <laughs> lot of nice things to say about you. We're, we're, Thank you. We're going to get the ball rolling here. But first, a very quick disclaimer. Should we discuss specific investments in this show, do not take them as recommendations. You know why? Because they're not recommendations. Before you invest in anything, you've got to do your own research. You've got to make your own decisions. Okay, let's get back to the topic at hand. Farnoosh, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your experience, how you happen to become the Beyonce of personal finance podcasting. <laughs> tell us a little bit. Um. You know, little little girl dreams coming true. That's, that's I'm just living the dream. Um, I, thank you first for having me on your show. I'm, I'm super excited. Well, I started about two decades ago. I am maybe not Beyonce, but I am, uh, I guess you could say, like one of the OGs of personal finance talk and writing. I started at, in the early 2000s. I have a degree in finance and I have a degree in journalism. And I decided, well, let's just blend those two together and start writing and talking and researching uh, personal finance. And I had the great opportunity to work at some amazing companies uh, to reach the masses from Money Magazine to the street.com, Yahoo Finance. And now I'm editor at large at CNET Money. Uh, I also own a business where I create my own um, financial content. I have been doing that ever since the last recession. And that's been fun, uh, just getting to have some, you know, wear my entrepreneur hat. And, and through that, has uh, de- I've develop, developed the podcast, So Money. I de- I've developed books um, and really excited to uh, just having had all these years to, to, to work in this space. It's never a dull moment. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so I, I have to ask, though, you've been doing this for 20 years, so you must have started when you were nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, no, that's my very expensive night cream, I think. Uh, but I, <laughs> thank See, you for I, saying that. I, I promised you a tsunami of compliments and I'm going to deliver on. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I, I never want this show to end. I just... <laughs> so what are, I forgot what we we're talking about today, except for you. No, we're, we're talking about inflation and how to beat it. And Miranda, this is the topic you thought of, and, and you were right to do so because it is on everybody's mind. But would you mind leading the discussion for us uh, about inflation? What's going on and how bad is it and what should we be doing or whatever? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, first of all, like inflation's really yep. high. <laughs> um, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And it's higher than it's been in a long time, right? Oh my goodness. Um, but it's higher than it's been in a long we're time. We're talking about inflation, not you, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm in Idaho. That's not legal here. So... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's Idaho. It's going to be a while. So anyway, um, but yeah, no. So we've been in a very, in a long period of low inflation, inflation, right? We've had this unusually long period where inflation has been kept very low and we haven't had to worry about it a lot. And it's just pretty much gone from like zero to 60 in no time. And so now it's, it's hugely high. So 
you know, as we kind of look forward and, and look at this stuff, um, what are, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do this with Farnoosh is uh, she wrote this really great article for CNET about ways to fight inflation and things that you can do to fight inflation in your personal finances. So the thing I'm most interested in right now are what are some of the areas, uh, Farnoosh, that you're seeing a big impact in uh, prices? Like where are some of those personal line item budget areas that you're most likely to be impacted by inflation? Honestly, Miranda, I don't know if there's any um, sacred cow here. I don't <laughs> think that any category is immune to rising prices. Uh, you know, whether you're looking at housing, rent, um, or food, gas, energy prices, uh, everything is expensive. They, you know, I think it was um, Moody's Analytics, the economist there who looked at Okay, so 9.1% year over year rising inflation. What does that actually mean? And they looked at household expenses and they said on average for a family, that's over $460 extra a month. And that just keeps, you know, they, they were smart to keep kind of looking at it in that way because I think that really brings it to planet Earth and gives you a sense of the, the financial toll. And people aren't buying more or, you know, they're not buying Gucci bags, you know, with these $460. Uh, although if you find one for $460, let me know. Uh, but like, they're just living the life that they had last year or less than and spending extra. Um, so I think the areas that are most hit, uh, housing, food, energy, um, and I wish that our wages were catching up to this. That's really part of the big, that's part of why this is so hard is that uh, we, you know, normally our wages go up, you know, at average inflation, which is about 2% a year, but we haven't had that uh, in, in some time. So um, that's on top of the fact that we're paying more, we're also not making enough. Yeah. Uh, by the way, guys, I, d I have some stats here that I collected just before we went oh, no. on the air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is I that? What is that? Stacy brings the receipts. Well, I, I was like just going to say, what is what is what is that uh, that Mark Twain said? Uh, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Let's do this. <laughs> yep, there you go. Here, but here's here are some numbers. Gasoline is up fifty nine point nine percent, sixty percent, largest increase since March of nineteen eighty. Electricity up thirteen point seven percent. Food up twelve point two percent. Shelter up 5.6%, household furnishings up 9.5%, new vehicles up 11 used cars and trucks only up 1.7%, uh, airfares up 34%. We were talking about this yes. before we went on the air. You just you were just saying that, Farnish. My friend just got back from Vegas. He went from New Jersey to Vegas, and he said to me, my flights were $1,600. For first yeah. class? No. <laughs> what? Yes. I mean, remember when Vegas was take? you remember you could get on a flight to Vegas for like $99. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'd, I'd be walking before I'd <gasps> Those take. were the days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, 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 that is because of supply problems. And, and that's something we should get into because, you know, inflation is not just because we have, um, you know, this surplus of money in the economy for whatever reason, but we also don't have enough to go around. And so when there is scarcity, then obviously, you know, I'm not an economics uh, major, but I did, you know, make my way through Econ 200. It basically that throws off the, the balance. Prices go up either when you have high demand or when you have low supply. And I think the supply problem is worse uh, right then, yeah, I think you know I think some so people too. are blaming the stimulus money that went through the economy. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't glad know. you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up, Farnish, because this is something. I, and I haven't even looked at the outline of the show, so I'm not sure what we're supposed to be talking about. But here's something that happens a lot. I, I, I have you know, Money Talks News is a website. We do millions of page views a month. Not as big as CNET, but we're not little. And we did an article. Uh, basically, the bottom line is this: when people comment on articles, they are continually blaming each other. That is. They're blaming Democrats. They're blaming Biden. They're bl you know, and then the and then the Democrats who are responding are they get big fights over who's responsible for inflation. Right. Where did inflation come from? What do you what's what's your opinion? Well, in in a, in a word, it's the pandemic. But there were many things that happened in the pandemic that led to inflation. It wasn't just you know the stimulus. Uh, you could argue there's an argument that you know we put trillions of dollars into the economy and we didn't have a plan for uh, balancing that in the budget and or in the economy. And, you know, we didn't raise taxes. We didn't, uh, you know, really do anything to sort of, you know, make sure that um, 
we don't have oversupply. We didn't of target dollars. the stimulus, right? I mean, in other exactly. words, we didn't give it to the people who really need but, it. Um, we gave it to everybody, right? Yeah, exactly. But like in in hindsight, would you would you not do it again? I, I you yeah. know, it saved us from a, a real recession happening Huge. In, yeah. in the pandemic. It's amazing that we didn't have a recession. We had one for like a minute and yeah. then it went away. Um, and, but I think what really the pandemic created was. Um, a health crisis that led to workers unable to work, people not able to work, and bankruptcies and all sorts of uh, supply chain problems. Like just trying to, you know, China is our biggest uh, uh, importer. We import more from China than any other country. And of course, they were this epicenter for COVID. So you can do the math. I mean, there's just not enough people making the stuff. I remember I was renting a car. I was getting a car in the pandemic and I was, I consider myself lucky because I only had to wait four months for my car because the micro, the microchips were not in, in the country. Um, I have friends who waited a year. So you have a shrinkage of supply and also people who had the advantage of working continuing to make money and saving that people saved 30% on average in at, at some at one point in the pandemic we looked at personal savings rate and it's up to 30% because there was nowhere to spend your money there was nowhere to spend your habits were upended you weren't going on trips you weren't going to restaurants um, your rent was probably lower right because landlords were trying to just make some money people were leaving and, and there was a lot of migration in the pandemic so it was it was, it was depending on where you lived you probably had um, low rent for a while. And so, again, the privileged had this opportunity to save, and now we're executing on that. We're we're going, like, I was just talking to a friend, how are people paying all this money for plane tickets? One, <laughs> they're slashing their their flights. We know United is, like, I'm in I'm near Newark, and that's where the United Hub is, and they just, you know, they're just cutting flights because they can't get people to come to work. At the same time, people are, are are paying for these big ticket flights because it's and it's just the rich, I guess, going <laughs> on these flights or people are putting it on credit. I worry about what's going to like we assume, oh, you just have to be you're paying on cash. But the buy now, pay later and the credit card companies of the world are probably making nice, nice cash right now. Yeah. yeah so okay. and that's what happens so when, when people can't afford anything. They start opening that credit card. Exactly. Well, and I think one of the things, too, that... It, well, also the, the war, too. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, ahead, I was just going to say, say? Yeah, so one of the things that Furnish pointed out, though, was that the savings rate was really high during 2020. And so if you look at this um, this this consumer spending, this not this consumption trend, if you look at this consumption trend that the Congressional Budget Office put out, um, they were looking at that, and somewhere around... Um, you know, April 2020, like it just drops, it just drops toward the end of 2020. It starts to come back up. But by the time you get to February 2021, we're above the trend line and it's about 15% more than it should be. Because basically what happened is kind of what Farnoosh was saying was people had all of this money that they had in savings and then they just unleashed it in demand and the supply wasn't there. We're, we're not out of the, right. we're not out of the woods yet. Um, I mean, there's a uh, you guys watched last week with with uh, John Oliver. Oh John yeah, Oliver. yeah, yeah. He had a really good yeah, program really good you know, on on inflation, where he kind yeah. of you know did the whole expanse around the world and what everything happened. Um, but I mean, this is it's just the beginning. Yeah, I think we're just yeah, in the, exactly. The beginning I mean, I think to me, I think it all started with that Suez Canal jig and uh, that ship in uh, Egypt. You ever notice, yeah. like uh-huh. ever since that ship got bent, then it went to COVID, then it went to everything else. Um, but let's not forget, inflation is happening around all other countries. It's not just here. Um, what, uh, Wuhan the other day, just, they mentioned again that they're, they're cutting off everything in the city. So that's going to have to go to supply chain A million problem. people locked down because they, they found four cases right. and locked down a million right. people. So, I mean, yeah. this, yeah. this isn't going away. we got the war. None of this is going away anytime soon. And, uh, so the only no, thing no, the Fed can me, control, ahead, the Fed ahead. can only control, you know, our spending habits, you know, and as they're increasing all this up, right. we're spending less and hopefully that's yeah. bringing down all these other problems, but it's. This is a global problem right now. It's not just a simple spending and, you know, supply and demand. You know. Right. We're, we are just putting a Band-Aid on things by raising interest right. rates. The real constraints that can lead to things like inflation and, and recessions and depressions is when you don't address these longer term problems that have been, they've been waving, you know, for a while now. And, and we're, we're very slow to addressing things like global warming, for example. It's nice to see that we had some movement with that, with Biden's climate package. 
Um, but not to throw more wood onto the pile, uh, we have a warming planet. And if you remember last year and the year before that and the year before that, what happens between August and November? Um, farms get decimated. Factories get decimated because we have severe weather storms. We have flooding. We have droughts. We have fires. And this is not that something that we are addressing quickly enough, aggressively enough. It's, we saw inflation because of climate shocks last fall. So I don't know. I don't have the answers, but I, I'm just saying that, you know, I've been saying for a while that I don't think rate hiking our way out of this is the only lever. And, and I know that I was just on MSNBC yesterday and one of the M correspondents was like, well, everybody, every time there's an economic downturn, we always blame the Fed. They're not doing enough or we're not. It's like, yeah, for a reason. Why? Wait, now, <laughs> I want to play devil's advocate. I want to play devil's advocate, oh, advocate no. here for a minute. Because, sure. because in, inflation is somewhat being corralled. As we speak, because, okay, we're just, just so those of you who are listening to this podcast, it is, uh, what is it, July 28th, uh, 2022. Yesterday, the Fed raised the, the, um, the, the rate money, I'm sorry, what am I trying to say? Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate. To, to mm-hmm. 0.75. They raised it by 0.75. Okay. Point being though, gasoline has dropped precipitously in the last couple of months. It's still high, still high, but, and, and all number, uh, all, all manner of commodities also have plummeted. So, in other words, demand is being destroyed by rising rates, and then sure. the, the destruction of demand is ultimately. I mean, this is the 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 tool the Fed has is blunt, yeah. right? Interest rates, but it is, but it is. Some might argue being effective in bringing down inflation. Yeah, you know, my issue, Stacey, is not that I don't believe in. I don't have. I have faith in the Fed. I think like they have that one job. Well, they have two jobs. They have to manage inflation, and they also have to avoid a recession. <laughs> and like you yeah. know, hopefully they have that soft landing. I respect the Fed. I think they have a very difficult job and it's going to be a slow decrease. Like we're, we, you know, they've been raising rates since March and only maybe next month we'll see an actual average inflation come down. But my, my real point is that I would love for the, maybe it's the administration uh, and, you know, I voted for Biden. I, I would love to see more of a firm stance on what is truly happening, calling it a recession, stop playing it or playing around, dance, moving the goalposts. Like people are really hurting and not just because of the aftermath of the pandemic, but because we see where things are going too. why aren't we addressing these bigger issues? I know that all administrations, you know, it's all about getting the next getting into getting in for the next election and i yeah. very few people are willing to say we're going to do hard things this is going to get harder before it gets easier we have to i don't know i'm not raise taxes for example we're going to we're going to start to penalize these companies like exxon mobil that are price gouging um we're going to gosh uh accelerate our global our, our climate package to make sure that you know we're, we're hitting these targets sooner than later because all of these things contribute to recessions and inflation. And I just more. think like we're all adults here, you know, yeah. like nobody doesn't think we're in a recession. Ask the average American, 58% of Americans in a recent polling said, yeah, this feels recessionary. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I, only, I share your frustration. By the time they, yeah. the by the time they know, feel it, it's already here. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, well, you know, I, you know, the, it's so frustrating when you watch the news or, or read the news. You've got Republicans screaming that this is Biden inflation and Biden is screaming this is Putin inflation. Yeah, nobody you know I mean? wants to take and, accountability. Yeah, no one and, is, and it's like it, the truth is what you said. I mean, there's a war. There was the there was a pandemic. There's there's supply uh, supply chain snafus. These things are all true. So let's just be adults and stop b- casting blame at yeah. each other and Part recognizing of- it for what it is and taking steps to, well, to think- come back. But we don't want to do it. Well, I think part of the issue is is we pretend like somebody's going to fix it and it's going to be magic. It's right. not one person's problem yeah. and, to fix, and, right? And we always yeah. – And there are many it's weird to as it. Americans – is particularly how we're always talking about democracy and blah 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 but we want a king to just make it all better and, and to take all the responsibility and fix it for us and that's that's how we treat yeah. our president when really most of the policies that we need to address this have to come through congress um and then it uh, yeah, yeah that's also true and a lot of the stuff we can't control exactly. at all <laughs> you, you know, know we can't can't control the war you know, we, we, I mean, obviously yeah. we have some input to the war, but we can't control other events happening outside of our borders, generally speaking. I mean, the whole world's experiencing this. 
Uh, but you know what, you guys? I'm sorry to stop right here, but I, I missed my <laughs> break a little while ago. I'm going to take a really quick break. We're going to come back. And when we do, when we do, I'm going to try another tack that's going to piss you guys off. I'm going to I'm going to mount uh, an argument that inflation is not as bad as the media says it is. Mm. I'll be right back. We'll, we'll explore that in just one minute. Stay right there. Okay, now we're back. And I, I want to talk. I wrote an article. I, I wrote my first book, Farnoosh, 20 years ago. Um, more than, actually. But anyway, in that book, I, I wrote uh, about inflation. And I said that your personal rate of inflation is what is really all you should care about. Not that you don't care about other people, but I'm just saying your inflation rate may be vastly different than the sure. inflation rate being promoted by the mass media. For example, almost mm -hmm. 40% of what we call inflation, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, is made up of housing. Well, I own a house, so th it's making my house more valuable. That sure as hell ain't hurting me. It's helping me. Right. Um, the New York Times did a really great um, piece on this. They actually have a personal inflation rate calculator. You can go on there. I did that. And, I did that. Yeah. I and uh, yes, depending on your lifestyle and your income and whether you have a fixed rate this or a variable rate that, clearly inflation and uh, the current rate hikes and all of that are going to affect you differently. Um, you know, one of the takeaways I... I remember from that interview, I, I actually heard the writer of that piece do a podcast on the daily. And he said, you know, one of the best things to fight inflation is um, in rising rates is to have a fixed rate mortgage, which uh, if you bought a house in the last two years and you have a rate of like 3%, that's a way to hedge against rising housing costs, for example. Um, so definitely in inflationary times, it's not an e a level playing field, a level affecting field that people, typically people who are um, poorer, who can't afford to own assets um, that are fixed and can store value are, are going to be harder hit. And, and that's Definitely. why I think we have to have a, a better sense of urgency around this. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and, but, you know, if, but, but if you are a person out there listening to this, then your inflation rate may not be the inflation rate that you're seeing on NBC Nightly News. Uh, <laughs> it could be worse. It could though. be worse. You're right. You're right. Could be worse. <laughs> you know? But I mean, like new vehicles. I just said this a little while ago, up 11.4 percent. I'm, I'm not buying a new vehicle. You know, it doesn't affect me. Yeah. Now, right. electricity, I do use. Gasoline, mm -hmm. I don't use very much because I don't drive very far. I use a bicycle. Typically. But th my point isn't that Stacy's inflation rate is this, that or the other. It is that. Take some time, listener, and, and see what your personal inflation rate is before you start getting totally freaked out. Before you now, start cutting off your Netflix account and all yeah, these things. Yeah. And yeah but your you point is also well taken, yeah. Fernish, because even if it doesn't affect me, it does affect people who matter. It, it affects mm -hmm. people who don't, who, who like I said, it's the majority of Americans, yeah. you know, not the, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So let's transition from that into what we can do to fight inflation. Like, for example, one of food. Okay, food, food is, uh, what was it, up 12.2%. Now, yeah. one thing I can do to, to lower my food bill is to try going to generics when possible. Yes. Uh, and not eat out as much. That's part, part of that food is eating out. Oh, yeah. So, eating out fact, is yeah, <laughs> last oh, yeah. concert night, tickets. Yeah, last it's like night, concert tickets. Price. Oh, my God. Concert tickets. Don't even talk about those. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're just insanely expensive. $800 to go see... Uh, or maybe it was it was like five three thousand dollars to go see uh, Billy Joel. I, I was like, really? What? No, I people mean, people need listen, to play. I've, I've, seen, I've seen Rolling Stones. And, I've seen Ro <laughs> Rolling Stones and uh, Paul McCartney in the last three four months. Uh, and and I, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Much <laughs> <I'm not embarrassed. laughs> um, I think that I, to go back to your point, Stacey, about generics. I've been doing that for a long time. I'm a big fan of what, what, generic, or they're called sort of like. Uh, store brand products. So whether you shop at Whole Foods or your, you know, Acme, I mean, you know, grocery stores are so regional. Like I could name a bunch and nobody would know who what I'm talking about, but um, so, so stop and shop, right? They Target, Walmart, they all have their own brands. Costco has obviously Kirkland and it is significantly lower, especially if you're going and buying, you know, groceries for the week. And it's not just the processed boxed foods that they sell store brand they'll they'll have their own apples they'll have their own orange juice and milk and so you can uh really save across a lot of food categories by going generic we've done this story at cnet money and we think it's like anywhere from 30 to 40 percent cheaper um and 
we had actually, you got to check out this video. We had our kids do the taste test. We got a sampling of foods. Uh, one was the store brand. One was the name brand. And the store brand prevailed. It was like definitely it's hands down the, the, the better. And we, you know, good because it was cheaper. And that's what mom's buying. So I'm glad you like it too. I've done that same thing as a TV news story, Farnoosh, with champagne. <laughs> um, yeah. And guess what happened? Everybody picked the most expensive champagne. <laughs> so, uh, the, so the story uh, sucked. Yeah. But it the, was but from the, the region. <laughs> yeah. The, the story sucked. Well, the on top of there. that, food buying, what we do is we have like about three credit cards that give you these cashback rewards. And the, the uh, cashback rotates every three months. Yes. So one, one three months will be dining. One will be uh, uh, cashback on fuel, cashback on Home Depot, cashback on groceries or whatever it is. So we keep a note of what credit card's doing what every three months. And then make sure we use it for that. And that can save you quite a bit. Smart. Smart. So the the story of fighting inflation is really about yeah. saving money. It's the same story, right? Yeah, and you know, fighting inflation. I don't know if that's ever. If, inf, you know, inflation is just what it is. It's not fighting you. It's just there, and you need to like go and find your your sort of like way to navigate through that, so you can feel like your money is still earning what it did last year to some extent. I got a question um, for you guys. I got a question for you guys. So obviously these periods of inflation have happened before. And obviously there's like this little crazy cycle that happens where, you know, you have the inflation and then people aren't making enough money. Then they ask more money from the boss and then it gets more money. And then of course that keeps the inflation wheel going. But at what point, how long does this take for this thing to kind of level out? Yeah. It depends. Um, it depends. And there's actually an indicator. I think it's, um, it's called, I forget who does it. I want to say, I want to say, that, well, the Fed definitely looks at it and maybe it's, maybe it's the CPI. You're talking about inflation expectation? Yes. And that's pretty moderate. Like people don't think that we're going to have this long duration of inflation. And I think that is the worry about what you just articulated, Aaron, of like people going and asking for more and then getting more and then just sort of like, Inflation doesn't go anywhere because now people have right, the wages to support it. Right. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I don't, I don't, um, public service announcement <laughs> to all workers out there. If you need it, if you want to raise, get it now, or if you want to yeah. make more, get that new job now, because I, yes, 3.6% unemployment seems great on the surface, but we've already heard about a lot of layoffs. We know more in, are going to be happening, particularly in tech and particularly in like e-commerce and certain industries are going to be harder hit. I think if you have a job in healthcare, you're probably going to be okay, um, or travel airlines. Uh, but if you want to be a, a pilot, like now's a good time because there, there's a shortage. But I do think it's going to be a lot harder to convince your employer to give you more money in the next, you know, three to six months. I think the power sort of is tipping in right now f towards employees a little bit more because we Certainly. still have twice as many job openings as we do job seekers. But that's going to change. That's going to flip in a recession. And when you have companies who are relying on credit to grow, who can't anymore because it's too expensive yeah. and they have to lay off or they have to just stop hiring. Well, you know what, Aaron, to go back to Aaron's original question too, I can tell you when inflation will stop. Uh, because, okay, 1981, that was the year I became a stockbroker and interest rates, you could earn 20% on a, on a insured savings account. You could get me AAA rated municipal bonds that were paying 13% tax free. Uh, and let me tell you something. It was tough being a stockbroker back then. But back then, Paul Volcker, who I actually interviewed for uh, my local TV station back then. Uh, but Paul Volcker, here's what he did. And here's the answer to your question, Aaron. He went, he said, I will break the back of inflation. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how much I have to raise rates. I will keep raising rates until this economy stops over inflating and he and mm -hmm. once he made that point and he and he backed it up by raising rates over and over and over until they were so high you couldn't afford to buy a house he, he put brakes on the economy and and this is why when you hear uh powell uh jerome powell when he's doing these meetings he's saying we're committed inflation is going to come down that's why he's talking like that because inflation will stop going up when people's expectations for inflation stop going up and the way they mm -hmm. and the way they stop that from happening is being very definitive and and taking severe action, and then people will and then this, that's the yeah. only way you can break this cycle. I wish somebody was as brave to be so <laughs> right. unpopular right now. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to say the unpopular thing, or maybe honestly, the, call out the elephant in the room. 
um, no one is willing to risk um, saying the hard things right now and acknowledging that the circumstances are bad. You know, we were joking um, that, okay, if you don't want to call it a recession or you don't want to call it, you know, a downturn, uh, let's just call it the <laughs> circumstances uh, because that yeah. seems to, that, that's the, you know, if you go to, there's, 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 there's memes of this on Twitter and elsewhere, like people posting, I think Conan O'Brien started it where, you know, merchants, restaurants, you know, apologizing to their customers due to the circumstances, we have to now raise our rates or raise our menu prices. And so the circumstances, it's like the code word for things you're, have gone bad. You're yeah. Right. So, you know, I want to, I want to make sure that our listeners get specific tips that they can use to fight inflation. I, I think we've circled around them, but it's essentially about saving money. But let's go. I heard from Miranda for a while. Miranda, <laughs> give, give me some specific ideas. That I know, I, I like right? It's so much fun, spot. right? Give me some specific <laughs> ideas that we can help. That, okay. For, okay. No, let me start you off. I, I can see, I can raise the, my deductible, my insurance policy and, right, and maybe yeah. save some money that way. Um, what, well, what, you know, so there's, there's that one there for sure. But like, I think one of the things, um, so, you know, Farnoosh was talking about earlier about like, okay, let's take a look at things like, okay, let's look at these off brands. So we'll start there. Uh, but when we're talking about food waste, um, you know, somewhere between like 30 and 40% of, of the food we buy goes to waste. And so really taking stock of, okay, do I have a meal plan for this week? What am I doing? Am I really going to eat the things that I buy? What is realistic for me? And that's one of the things I found is Back in the day when I used to be like, let's just buy a bunch of stuff and let's be super ambitious about what I'm going to make. <laughs> and then I started paying attention to what are my actual habits? And I'm like, okay, let's be real. And so kind of cutting back a little bit on that and just being taking stock about like, how much food am I eating? What do we do? Um, I grew up in, yeah, Tracking you know, and, and how much right? food am I throwing away? And do I really need to buy all of this? Um and then one of the things that we did growing up with my family was my mom froze a lot of things. And so we, we had a garden. I'm not saying you have to go grow your own food. It's too late in the season for that. Sorry. But, um, but you can freeze things. You can get frozen items. My mom used to get like these big bulk things of shredded cheese, then divide them up and freeze, freeze them. You can freeze cheese. Um, when, you know, when they're having a sale, and this is something I do is when they're having a sale, like sometimes at the local grocery, they have a buy one, get one free and it's like chicken breast. And so I do that and then I freeze, I freeze the excess chicken breast and come back to it later. Um, so really kind of, being ahead on that can really help out a lot. Yeah, I think that uh, to, to piggyback on what you said, Miranda, what I'm hearing mm -hmm. is like sometimes you have to make investments right. to save. And we bought a freezer, an extra freezer in our home so that we could long term benefit from uh, the, mm -hmm. the price savings in bulk buying foods that we could keep for up to a year. Um, we just did a piece on CNET about <clears throat> an upgrade, um, which oh. is the uh, heat pump. You can invest in a heat pump and that can save you money. Um, you know, <laughs> I haven't read the whole article, but I trust uh, <laughs> Steve Conaway and Gianmarco, who wrote the article, um, that this can save you uh, quite a bit of money. Yeah, it costs Going, a lot, though, too. It, yeah, but I think, you know, again, investing to be able to save long term. Mm -hmm. I think also just calling your billers and letting them know right. that you want to save. I, I These are not, these are small monthly expenses relatively. It's not your mortgage, but they are monthly. And in a year, you might spend um, over $1,200 on cable. But if you could call and get, you know, 10% off, that's $120. And that's one phone call that you did. You know, and we've done um, experiments where we've just not even called. We've gone onto their websites and texted with a customer service agent. And whether you're talking about cable or your car insurance or uh, your cell phone, it never hurts to ask. It's it's a lunch hour, you yeah. know, to kind of make a list of these billers and go and say, hey, I'd like to learn ways that I can save with you. Do you have any promotions going on right now? Or I've been a longtime customer and I like my service, but there's a lot of competition out there. And I, you know, want to know, like, customer retention, yeah. we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. 
And you can negotiate for anything. You know, I, I'm famous for hotel negotiating. You know, I'll, I'll go up to the front desk uh, and my wife won't <laughs> because she knows I'm about to start doing this. But I'll go, like, can, can I have a, a bigger room for a lower price? Because you know what? I really like your hotel, but the one down the street is less. You know, yeah. and, and if nothing else, can I have the Elvis suite? I mean, come on. There must be something you can do for me. You know, I yes. just, if you don't ask, you don't get. And often if you do yeah. ask, at the very minimum, I mean, even at the airline counter, I mean, it doesn't hurt a smile. And a joke and an ask could take you a long way. Uh, and yeah. and, and I, I do that constantly. It doesn't work with women, but it can work when I'm well, negotiating. And we like to do the <laughs> sacrifice without sacrificing because we love going out to eat. But it's kind of really expensive out there. So we've now switched to happy hours and sharing little plates of dinner, you know, appetizers and stuff like so that. So happy hours yeah. pretty soon. I'm so sorry. Have to get, <laughs> get going on so this. You know, I just heard today that in Massachusetts, they outlaw have happy hours outlawed in Massachusetts. What? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, it's been um, they, you know it's a Commonwealth. They have their ways of they have yeah, so they have sad hour. <laughs> they have it's, mu- it's, mundane it's hour. It's meant to reduce drunk driving, I think. Oh. And there's probably like there's probably a real valid good reason for it. Or ha- um, but. I thought you were I saying they you, didn't want anybody to be happy. Could you call it something else? Maybe there's another <laughs> way around it. You know, They're, these Commonwealth laws are so specific. It's well, and I think of, uh, I, I, I didn't want to go to Massachusetts. All everyone's going to be walking around with their, with their But I do want to kind of go back to what Aaron was saying <laughs> yeah. about like the appetizers and the happy hour. Um, one of the things that my ex-husband and I used to do is that we used to do like – we would have like a day where um, if my son was in school, we would go to a matinee movie. So we wouldn't have to hire a babysitter. The matinee is cheaper. And then, you know, you go have a little lunch afterward and lunch is cheaper. So like everything about the whole, the whole interaction Definitely. was much cheaper. So we still had dates, so, but it was like date day. And we would like go during the day and it saved, I mean, things like that can really help you save money. Yeah. I also want to encourage, we've talked mm-hmm. about savings, but yes. earning more outside of your job, yeah, that's a good um, idea. side gigs, side hustles. I, we did a video on CNET money where we just looked at, you know, easy, fine, you know, not low, low lift side hustles. Like if you like pets, you could dog sit. Um, you can, you know, freelance, you can go on task grab, you can probably make a, an extra 50 to a hundred bucks a week doing something that leverages mm-hmm. your skills, interests, time. And there's so many websites that right. that's what the last recession gave us. What yeah. it was, were, were all these like, um, the freelance economy essentially. And even if it's just to help you pay down your credit card bill faster or get that savings nest egg built faster, doing this once a week. 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there. I used to babysit and before I had my own kids and was married, I bird sat, I freelanced, wrote articles while I had a full-time job. And I think depending on, you know, where you are in your life, you have different time constraints. So not all side hustles will be, you know, great for everybody, but there's something out there for you. And if you are more motivated to earn than save like me, I think Speaking of side hustles, um, hustles. because of, um, you know, cars have increased in prices, tires, gas, you know, fixing your car. Has that really bit into yeah. earnings with Uber and Lyft drivers? Oh, I bet it has. Well, you know, they've gone yeah. up too. Yeah, Uber. they have a fuel fee now. And I always tip. I feel like also um, one thing that started in the pandemic, which will endure, and I don't know how I feel about it, I but I'm doing it, is just like over tipping and Tipping things that you wouldn't have tipped before, right? Like going yeah. to get, pick up your food at a restaurant from the host. I tip, you know, because, or yeah. when you pay with your credit card now, wherever you're shopping, even if it's at like Bloomingdale's, well, <laughs> like yeah. probably you tip like the a clerk thing. at Bloomingdale's. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but like, I feel like, well, again, there, to, yeah. there are these examples where tipping like, used a tip to be is a service. Not, you gotta, how much <laughs> money tip? do you have, Farnoosh? <laughs> No, well, I don't always go. I'm not shopping a lot, but I see this and I, people are wondering like, what's the etiquette now? And I think like, it's embarrassing when you put zero, you know, it's like, what do you do? But, yeah. um, I think, you know, I was going to say something and I, I lost my train of thought. It was, a, it was about, uh, earning more, uh, it'll come back to me. 
Well, anyway, you know, I, I think it is. I, I'm glad you brought that up, too, though, because earning more is really important. And it's exactly I mean, obviously, it's the other side of the coin from saving more. But and, and before we end, and we're about to as soon as as soon as Farnoosh remembers her thought. Um, I remember but, it. Oh, you, go ahead. Go ahead before you forget. Yeah. <laughs> Take care of your stuff. Take care of your stuff, because to replace parts to we had to put our car, we had to give our car, you know, in for some treatment. It took months because parts aren't coming in. Um, so get the refurbished warrant, get the warranty or, you know, the extended warranty, especially if you're paying a lot for something, because to replace an item, it's going to be more expensive than what you started paying, what, than what you probably bought, bought it for last year or six months ago because of inflation, but also replacing it could take forever. Good so point. that's one last thing I want to say. And you can also borrow other people's mm-hmm. stuff instead of using yeah. your own. That's what I try to do. I borrow someone's car, crash on their sofa, use their boat. You know, whatever whatever doesn't cost me anything, <laughs> I try to do. <laughs> Make rich friends is what uh, our final <laughs> tip. Yeah, with, yes. one with but, yachts, preferably. And, and yeah. one last thing before we close. Everything we've talked about here today. There, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting articles. 20 ways to save on groceries on our site, and I'm sure on CNET Money, too. Uh, you know, 20 ways to save when you eat out, 20, 15 ways to save on entertainment, 20 ways to save on gas. You, these articles are all over the place. So if you find you have more month and money, do a little research. I mean, obviously, it's not a panacea. There are people who literally can't make it from month to month now because of inflation. Uh, and for those people, then the only solution is to try to earn more money. But for those of you who, who things seem a little tight, at least, A, track your expenses, and then, B, go through those expenses and see if there's some way that you can achieve the same quality of life for less money. Like, for example, buying generics or splitting an entree, blah, blah, blah. And there's a million different articles out there that are going to give you a million different ways to do just that. Mm-hmm. Uh, any any final thoughts, Farnoosh or, or Miranda or Aaron? Um, another one is DIY if you can. <laughs> Mm. Learn how to watch YouTube videos. I mean, I had yeah. a yep. uh, four hundred dollar mm-hmm. lawnmower here that was uh, going to put on me, and I just instead of buying another four hundred dollar lawnmower, I found a little carburetor, found a filter, found some other spare parts for it on on Amazon and other places, and it was like all together was uh, I think seventy five bucks, and it works again. Yeah, yeah, and save the difference. Yeah. We talk about saving, but then actually taking that savings and putting it in savings is a, is the final step that we often don't do. We sort of like feel good that about the fact that we saved, but it's not really a savings mm-hmm. unless you parked it somewhere and it's there for you next time. I gave myself an appendectomy <laughs> from a YouTube video with a pair of toenail oh. clippers. I mean, you can do, I, it'll teach you anything. Mm. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> good luck, everybody. <laughs> So um, <laughs> we are out of time, guys, but we are never out of topic. Dig a little deeper. You're going to find links to lots more info in our show notes. And remember, if your goal is to make more, to spend less, to retire rich, your online home is moneytalksnews.com. And don't forget to check out Miranda's online home as well. That is Miranda Marquit, M-A-R-Q-U-I-T dot com. And of course, Farnoosh Tarobi. Her website. Now I'm going to say, that, is it, do you want CNET money or Farnoosh.tv? So it's Farnoosh Tarabi and CNET Money. Okay, so what was on my script was wrong. But anyway, look for, she's the only Farnoosh out there. Look for her, yeah. you're going to find her. <laughs> <laughs> if, you've got a, if you've got a question, comment, or topic you'd like to suggest, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at hello at moneytalksnews.com. That's hello at moneytalksnews.com. And one last thing, if you like what we do, then do something for us. Subscribe to our podcast. It takes you two seconds, really helps us so. So if you like us, show us and subscribe and tell your friends. I'm Stacy Johnson. I'm Miranda Marquette. I'm Aaron Freeman. And I'm Farnish Tarabi. You're so smart. I, I, I forgot to tell you that in the, before the podcast started. You knew what to do. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We're going to see you right here next time. Mm-hmm.